Alright, welcome back to my Space Engineer's Beginner's Guide, Episode 8. If you recall uh, from our last episode, we put in a couple of large cargo containers and piped the first one up at least to take ingots out of our refinery via a uh, conveyor sorter uh, over into the first container there, which is directly attached to our assembler so that we can put resources from that container. And that today we're going to, at least to start with, we're going to pipe up our assembler over into our second storage container here, which is where we're going to store all of our ingots. Sorry, correction, all of our components. Now, this will be set up very much the same as what we did for... Um, okay, piping is not very neat, but it will to start. And this is actually just a, a demo unit, if you will, a sample unit of how to use the conveyor sorters to, um, well, to literally sort and to, to pull the resources, the various resources, from one location to another. So, I think the easiest way is, I want to keep this front, this front conveyor port here free, so that we can access manually. So I think we'll actually take from the top conveyor port there. I'm just trying to think about the easiest way to do this. Now I also want to leave this front conveyor port on the cargo container free again so that we can manually access this. So I think that's going to prompt us to actually probably come in this side here. So Nothing's actually very well placed and we didn't think about that initially, did we? Okay, are we actually producing anything? I don't think we are. Take those for the moment. We're actually going to grind that down again and move it again. We'll just dump them in there. Now, yeah, just about just going to contradict exactly what I just finished saying. We're not going to worry about leaving access to any of these conveyor ports because we can access this and it's anywhere. And it's actually the result of the components that we're after, not the actual assembly. So let's just get rid of that. And these two. What we're going to do is put our assembler up on top of our refinery here, hopefully. No, maybe that's not going to let us. But we do want a direct port connection, and that will give us a direct port connection. Yes. We'll stick it there, that way we can take a conveyor sort of straight off the tail of that, pipe it straight across and straight into the top of this one, which will work just perfectly. Now, note my hydrogen status down the bottom left hand corner. I'm about to actually pull out of the sky by the looks of this. Um, and there we go, we actually literally just ran out of hydrogen. But uh, fortunately we weren't too high off the ground. And I was able to make sure I was squarely on top of the refinery before we actually lost our jetpack. So let's just put that in there. And I'm actually going to grab two of these. Oh, that. Grab two of them at this stage, just so that we've got just some extra time up our sleeve. Alright, now, one conveyor sort of going in that direction. Just recall that those arrows, angle arrow looking things on the side of the sort of there, indicate the direction of the materials can pass through it. This is actually a much more straightforward. Okay, we need construction components 
and steel tube. Do we have any of those? No, look at this. We actually have to make some. So it was construction components. We actually do have to do that from up here at this point in time. Just down here, we'll stand up here. We want some construction components. Uh, 20 of those. Some small tubes, 20 of those. Excellent. And we have nowhere near enough. What do we need? We need another 40 plus 20 is another 60 of those and more interior plate. Okay, I'm actually going to do some stacks of 100. Now, I believe I covered this briefly a couple of episodes ago, but I'm going to make use of a keyboard to actually build large stacks quickly. Now, if you recall, if you press and hold control and then select an item, uh, it will build 10 of. It's the same with transferring to and from can, uh, inventories and containers. Um, Pressing shift will build a hundred, or as a multiplier, pressing control and shift together will build a thousand, uh, or move a thousand. Um, in this case, we're going to do stacks of a hundred, so we want two hundred of those, two hundred of those, and another hundred of those. I think there should be plenty at this point. resources we just jump down here so that we can access a terminal okay yep no not the other light there we go conveyor sorter components recall whitelist this is what we want coming through and components is the only item and we want a drain, which means it'll pull the items through. Now that said, we should be able to go straight to our container here and find our components are there. Okay, let's just dump them in there. Like that. So now, if you notice, we've actually got no steel plate in here. So what we're going to do... Okay, and do it from there production and we're going to do a stack of 1,000 steel plates and if we watch back in our inventory here bingo and they're starting to show up into our large container here which is perfect so as you can see we've made use of the basic conveyors mixed with uh, some conveyor sorters some control blocks if you will if you will that allows us to actually pass one product from one refinery component, like the refinery or the assembler, from one element to another. The refinery produces ore and turns ore into ingots. Those ingots are then dragged through into our ingot container. The ingot container has got an assembler attached to it, so the assembler has got full access to all of those items. But then we've also got a, a sorter that is taking any produced components, dragging them out of that assembler and putting them into a second container which is going to house and store all of our components uh, so that we can 
very easily access them all from one single location. Um, so that is a, a nice way of making use of conveyor sorters. Now, more um, for the, the programmers and developers out there, there is a, a, another way of being able to manage uh, these products as well. Um, several smart persons on the workshop have actually created uh, some scripts, programs if you will, that can run inside an actual game element block called a, a programmable block, tied to a timer block to call it over and over, or repeatedly set on a delay, usually it's a minimum of a one second delay, and these access the, the actual game's API, the internal coding of the game, and can actually manipulate uh, certain features of the game um, directly through that programmable block just like another little mini program running inside the game um, they are very clever and they work really quite well and we'll probably touch on some of those eventually um, but for a basic understanding and to, and to get started uh, especially with just a nice basic refinery like this I find conveyor sorters can work very well and it's reasonably scalable uh, if you if you are careful in, in planning out the placement of your different products, of different items I should say, uh, like our refinery for example, rather than dump it on the ground like this, or in fact even like this, I could take another refinery and stack it right in front of it, um, connecting through this port here and actually running onto the ground in front of it here, so it'd be two in a line, and then anything that's refined by those two of them would get dragged all through this first one, uh, this one here, all up into our container. So it would still actually work there. Um, and that's well and truly doable. You can do that. Just like we can actually scale with our assemblers as well. Because we've got this large connector port on top, uh, conveyor port on top, we can actually stack assemblers one on top of the other. So instead of having one assembler, we can have two or three or four and you can actually have them set to work in what's called a cooperative mode or you can have them work independently working independently means that you actually have to select each individual assembler and assign a product to it to, to, for it to produce just selecting a product won't use all of them excuse me um, whereas if you do set multiples if you've got multiples of the assemblers if you set um, the first one as you leave it as stands as a, just a normal assembler and then all the other assemblers if you make them or set them into what's called cooperative mode uh, what that means is when you go to the first assembler the one that's left normal and you tell it for example to queue up a thousand steel like we did just before and let's say we've got four assemblers uh, through the other three are all set to cooperative mode so we queue up a thousand steel plates in the first assembler well, in cooperative mode, it will take that thousand and it will split it evenly by four, and it will sign, in this case, 250 per assembler because there's four assemblers. And that way, each assembler is only generating 250 elements, but they're all doing it at the same time. So you get your thousand elements, your thousand steel plate, in the same time as it would take to actually only generate 250 steel plates if you only had the one assembler. And that does scale accordingly as well. So the more assemblers you've got, the quicker it can produce things when they're set into a, a cooperative mode. Uh, if you had ten assemblers and you assigned a thousand to the to the primary, the lead one, it would split that thousand evenly. So that what's that? Ten per. Um, sorry, a hundred per. So you would have your one thousand steel plates in the same time as it would take for one assembler to generate one hundred steel plates and you're getting 10 times the amount because you've got the 10 assemblers. So it can work very nicely when it comes to scaling up into a large refinery and assembling plant. Um, and as you get further into the game and, and explore further and build larger bases, you may find that you'll have a, 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 a refinery and slash, slash, uh, slash assembler plant that could have you know, 15, 20, 30 assemblers. Uh, you might have 10, 12, 16, 20 refineries. You know. But then again, you might also be mining uh, millions of kilograms of ore. And yes, 
uh, my in other games I actually do have some games where I mine millions of kilograms of ore at a time. Um, one point there I think I had about six million kilograms of iron ore in storage whilst it was still processing. Um, but yeah, that's not necessary in all situations. I mean we've got quite a lot here in our little resource wall and we might even be able to see some of that in action eventually. But for now I just wanted to show you the basics of using conveyors and conveyor sorters to be able to sort your products as they are refined and manufactured into various containers. Like if we need ingots for any reason, like for uranium as an example, we can come over here and we'll be able to access it. In fact, let's just do that right now. Let's go and grab some of this black gold stuff at the end here. In fact, that will be sufficient because it's going to go everywhere. Now we don't need a lot at this point. Wow, did it go a long way or what? Our little mine from before. Our previous when we started out in the creative environment. Right. And yes, as I said then, I wouldn't be surprised to find some product over there somewhere. Alright, so let's just fly on over here. Our refinery, we'll put our 1.6k into there. You notice it's barely getting any and it's pulling it straight out. That is because it is it is actually taking it and putting it over here into our container. Now keeping in mind if if we wanted to, we don't in this case, but if we wanted to, um, and you, you can actually pipe your reactors as well into an entire conveyor network. Uh, just like other cocoon containers, like this one, anything with these large connector ports, uh, large conveyor ports, can be attached into that conveyor network. Now, reactors by default, in fact, most most of the items in the game actually by default come switched with this this switch turned on. Use conveyor system. Now, if that is turned on and you start refining uranium. Even in a scenario like we've just got here, unless it is isolated so that, that you can't actually drag the uranium out of that container directly through the co conveyor to the reactor, the reactor will actually start drawing uranium all by itself. Um, reactors have got a capacity, and somewhere here, where is our reactor? It's probably here we go. It does actually have a, a volume capacity and it will keep drawing uranium ingots until it maxes this 10,000 litre volume. Uh, believe me, that is a lot of uranium and it would probably power your base forever. Um, so I find that it's actually probably an advantage you assign a certain amount of uranium to your reactor, even if it is part of the, the network, it makes it easier. You can just click and drag it and put however much you want in there but I usually turn the conveyor system off for small reactors so that you assign a certain amount to it and then it won't draw anymore you do have to run the risk that uh, if it does chew through or burn through that uranium and it runs out then the reactor will shut down um, but if you keep an eye on your system and keep an eye on levels most of the time yeah you see it's getting low you can just assign some more uranium to it and it's fine again for another many many days or hours of gameplay whichever way you want to look at it um, now again there are a lot of management scripts out there that inventory management scripts that are great for this um, we might look at one of them eventually but uh, I don't think it's necessary at this point in time Now, I know we only just covered, you know, and only basically just built the remainder of this uh, conveyor and conveyor sorter system. 
but I'm going to stop this uh, beginner's guide at that point. I don't want to really overload too much information in one episode. Um, I would suggest if you are interested and you do want to, to play around with and, and learn how they use, just even you can build these just in a uh, creative game as well. It's, it's a lot quicker. It's just as you saw in the earlier episodes, it's just click and it's done. Um, and you can build them up and experiment around with it, the way the conveyor sorters work. They will work just as well in a uh, creative environment than they will in a survival. But I suggest, uh, yeah, piping some things up, putting some conveyor sorters in the loop, and uh, just having a look at exactly how product is transferred and, and what you can and cannot do. And uh, get familiar with uh, conveyors and conveyor sorters. But for now, thank you for watching. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, frog in the throat. Thank you for watching, and uh, I will not be streaming tomorrow. Um, so I'll see you in a couple of days' time when we continue with our beginner's guide. So thank you once again, and happy engineering. Thank <laughs> you.